presentation. So, uh, as mentioned before, this series uh, started last week with Germany, and today we will present Spain. In the coming weeks, we will go through uh, France, Italy, UK, Belgium, Poland, Mexico, Indonesia, and Denmark, at least. Uh, some uh, short notes on the methodology followed. We have used data tables uh, based on detailed energy balance and published indicators. We have um, done some literature review to identify and describe national energy plans, energy efficiency, and infrastructure expansion. A number of conclusions have been made out of the previous inputs. Also, some expert interviews have been carried out to verify and refine findings. And today we offer this uh, public interactive webinar for wider inputs and review. Today we will see a short introduction to the country, some energy policy features, some details on supply, demand, and prices of energy, and then a summary of the main uh, findings and well, and characteristics of this country. With uh, 46 million inhabitants for a land area of uh, half a million square mi uh, kilometers, Spain has a rather low population density when compared to other European countries like Germany, as you see last week, or even higher density like, like Bel Belgium. GDP per capita is around $31,000 to $32,000 per year, which is close to the EU average, uh, which is at around 35. Spain has a big wind and solar potential. The map on the left shows, uh, let me show here, the map on the left uh, shows the wind resource. Most of uh, the surface appears in green color, which means rather low average speed for the sheltered uh, terrain, so about four meters per second. However, in hills and ridges, uh, this average value multiplies by two, which automatically translates the potential to levels comparable to uh, Scotland one of the windiest regions in Europe. Considering the fact that Spain is a very hilly country, you'll see in the next slide, average altitude is 660 meters, just after Switzerland in Europe. The onshore wind energy potential is uh, actually quite high. But of course, Spain is uh, known in Europe for its uh, solar resource. Um, the vast majority of the country exceeds levels of uh, 2,000 kilowatt hours per square meter of uh, global irradiation on south-oriented uh, surface, which is uh, what this uh, graph from the JRC represents. Uh, this is uh, roughly double solar resource than other countries. We mentioned Germany because um, this country has a significant amount of uh, to this, um, about eight times bigger than the, than the amount in Spain, which is five gigawatts. So based on these figures, one could think that the optimal location of generation facilities is a relevant aspect that should be addressed. Spain has uh, the potential to become a major renewable energy provider for Europe, at least at, at, solar, uh, at solar scale. Also, uh, it's not represented here, but the solar resource in terms of direct normal irradiation, which is the resource required for solar concentration technologies, Spain is uh, practically the only European country together with Portugal, so Iberian Peninsula, with significant resources, still a bit far from the values reached in the so-called solar belt of the world, where uh, direct um, 
normal irradiation is uh, is maximum. So basically, northern Africa, Middle East, um, north of Chile, etc. Topography, um, as mentioned before, average altitude is uh, 660 meters. There are abundant hills convenient for wind energy. Also, uh, good resources for hydro, but still not uh, wet uh, enough country. So, um, there is, despite the good orography, there is a limit to, to hydro resources. Some pump hydro, uh, so new uh, new power uh, pump hydro facilities have been built uh, in this region, uh, northern region. So there might be still some potential for pump hydro, but uh, pure hydro is, uh, of course, limited by, uh, by rain. Um, Pyrenees and Sierra Nevada. Uh, so Pyrenees and Sierra Nevada have peaks above 3,000 meters high, and many mountain chains distributed along the country with heights around 2,000 meters. Spain has wide extensions of uh, international waters in the north, Mediterranean, and Canary Islands. From an energy perspective, most of these areas correspond to high depth waters, which makes it difficult to deploy uh, an offshore wind energy. So for the time being, there are no uh, measure plans for offshore technology. On the resources side, Coal reserves are estimated in 500 million tons, and the current production is 10 million tons per year, dedicated mainly to feed coal power plants. Coal sector receives heavy subsidies, have been receiving an average annual contribution above 1 billion euros of public funds. This, uh, in some sense, is a contradiction um, in energy policy. On the one side, there are incentives to reduce CO2, on the other side, there are subsidies to increase them. <laughs> of course, there are many additional considerations, like social and political. Current uh, coal is uh, mostly dedicated to uh, electricity generation, and it covers 17% of electricity demand. We will see some statistics uh, later. On the nuclear power, there are seven reactors. Uh, adding 7.4 gigawatts installed. It covers 22% of electricity demand in Spain. These reactors will come to end of life between 2020 and 2034. Spain was a leading country in renewable energy growth till the regulatory amendments in 2012, which uh, stopped the ongoing um, development. Hydro covers 15% of electricity demand, but still it depends on whether the year has been wet or, or dry. Wind covers 20% and solar 5%, which makes a total 40% renewable energy share in the electricity mix. We'll come back to this later, but roughly this is the target or the estimated target uh, pointed for 2020. So uh, to some extent, uh, the electricity generation mix is already um, it's already good for the 2020 targets. We will see how in heating and cooling and, and transport uh, it's probably lower. And there is uh, there is uh, nowadays a concern of whether uh, the targets will be reached or not. With Brussels pointing at um, uh, well, uh, the country missing the trajectory to reach um, the 2020 targets. Still, there are five years ahead, so we will see four years ahead. We will see how this can be addressed. On the national energy plan, some highlights. Um, energy demand grew, uh, as we will see later, uh, very steep until 2008. Then uh, the economic crisis hit, and since then uh, there has been a continuous decrease in energy demand, uh, minus 1.4% average per year. Strong investments were made in electrical infrastructure. So still in 2013 and 14, 1 billion euros were 
uh, were invested. There is a diversified electricity generation mix, but uh, at the moment too much installed power. Um, the story starts in the 90s with a clear lack of installed power. So with liberalization of the sector, uh, many uh, gas fire power plant combined cycles were installed in the early 2000s till 2010 roughly. And the added number of gigawatts was 27. So um, with a country with a peak loads of 30, between 30 and 40 gigawatts, 27 gigawatts additional um, were uh, definitely a very high number. So no longer lack of power. At the same time, in the 2005 uh, and uh, the years after, there was a strong work growth of wind power till, well, till recent years. And then 23 gigawatts were added. So all together um, led to clear excess capacity installed. So today more than 107 gigawatts installed for just 41 gigawatt peak load. So most of uh, gas fire power plants are uh, not profitable any longer. They are usually planned for 4,000 hours uh, per year. Um, they are running less than 1,000 hours per year, so clearly below the profitability uh, threshold. There has been a reduction in all use, but still promotion of uh, national coal for electricity generation, and there are no plans for new uh, nuclear generation. Targets. So um, let's go through uh, the main uh, the main objectives. First, on the energy efficiency or well, primary energy consumption, a 26% reduction uh, by 2020. On the CO2, 10% um, reduction in the non-ETS uh, sector and 20% in the ETS sector by 2020. Uh, maybe a note on the greenhouse uh, gas uh, objectives. So uh, first point is the application of Kyoto Protocol at European level. Considering the particular economic and environmental situation in Spain in, the 90, in 1990, the country was allowed to increase its emissions by 15% at the 2008-2012 time horizon. Uh, actually, the, the objective was not achieved. The emissions were 25% uh, above 1990 level, and even much higher in the years before, uh, following the fast economic and population growth. But uh, following economic crisis, uh, the emissions in 2013 and 14 reduced below the 15% target. So we see how the GHG emissions are strongly related to economic activity, and uh, it's difficult to well, fine-tune the landing, <laughs> the landing point. Good. Uh, together with this, um, there is. Um, there is, uh, well, the allocation for Spain is uh, pretty close to the average for the European Union, so 20% share of renewables in final energy consumption. So we have seen in the electricity mix, mix it's uh, not far, it's uh, already a good percentage, but transportation and heating and cooling probably need some improvement. Or in exchange uh, to increase uh, the share further, the 40%. Uh, in the electricity mix. Uh, there are 17 autonomous communities or regional authorities which um, have uh, some say in the uh, energy policy, including renewable energy targets. So this, is, uh, this adds uh, an additional layer to uh, the global uh, country objectives. On energy efficiency, concretely, um, 
The National Energy Efficiency Action Plan of 2014 confirms the national targets uh, in line with the EU uh, targets, so the 26% uh, reduction in energy consumption mentioned before. How this will be made? Well, there are a number of um, regulations already in place. In the building sector, the technical building code, which is quite complete and ambitious. The building heating installations regulation, so-called RITE, also with uh, clear measures on efficiency for these uh, heat installations. Building energy performance certificate, and some initiatives to improve efficiency and penetration of energy uh, renewable energies in the, in the building sector. In the transport sector, promotion of biofuels and tax incentives for uh, clean vehicles. And the tertiary on services, green public procurement plan. Other measures vehiculated in the sustainable economy law. And the energy efficiency obligation scheme according to the Article 7 of uh, the Energy Efficiency Directive and the Energy Efficiency National Fund. On the renewable energy field, um, the main um, driver for development of renewable energy installations was this uh, law 661. Uh, before, there was some development uh, of wind uh, power plants, but this uh, law was definitely the, the big push for renewables. At those uh, years, uh, Spain was a uh, leader in development of renewable energy, so this law was clearly um, in the direction of a good promotion of renewables. The National Renewable Energy Action Plan points to 20% renewables in the final energy consumption, so aligned with the average European uh, target. So 38% in the renewable energy electricity. We are uh, already in this, in this range. 18% share in the heating and cooling, and 13% in the transport. As we will see later, we are still a bit far in the transport, and probably also in the heating and cooling. So uh, this law introduced um, feeding tariffs mainly uh, to a number of uh, renewable technologies, so differentiating uh, by technology, and um, solar, marine, wind, biomass, biofuels, um, any of that. Issues. Uh, the main issue came from uh, photovoltaics. Um, there was a fast reaction of the market because the, pro the incentives were quite high, um, 40 euro cents per kilowatt hour generated. Uh, sounds like um, too much from today's perspective. It was not that far in time. And uh, at that time, the prices of PV panels were dropping down, so this created very quickly a huge incentive to promote PV power plant. Many market players found windfall profit, uh, especially again for PV. Other uh, fields were either less developed or more mature, like uh, wind, so these effects of fast reaction and windfall profits didn't happen in other sectors. Uh, regulation reacted very slow, very slowly. It's probably not tuned for such uh, market reactivity. And then, uh, well, uh, about 3 gigawatts um, of PV plants were built uh, under the scheme of high incentives, 40 euro cents per kilowatt hour and more for PV, which uh, very quickly created a um, huge, um, huge gap in the uh, balance between income of electricity system and expenses. So in order to stop um, further imbalance, uh, a new government uh, came to power in uh, 2000, end 2011, 
an early 2012 uh, formulated um, revision of uh, energy uh, support schemes. And uh, it was quite drastic. All kinds of support was stopped. Uh, renewable energy markets uh, automatically collapsed. There was even the drastic revision of feeding tariffs um, for some cases of uh, photovoltaic installations. And today, still strong barriers persist. So we'll see later um, the tariff deficit issue, which partly explains this um, this uh, stop of all kinds of support uh, in the policies. Other features of the uh, electricity landscape uh, in the transmission, uh, the transmission level, uh, there is a single TSO, Red Electric of España. Um, nobody or no companies can own more than 5% of this company, of this transmission system operator, and state. Uh, the state must hold at least 10%. Currently, it holds 20%. So this is for uh, warranty of independence. Distribution level: there are four larger, um, four large electricity distributors: Endesa, Iberdrola, Gas Natural, EDP, that hold over 80% of the retail market. Then there are a number of small distributor distribution uh, companies. The quality of service, um, well, about 150 megawatts of electricity were not supplied um, last year, uh, so average interruption 0.3 uh, minutes. So this is a very, very low number, even the lowest in Spain since uh, 1992. Good. Um, so let's go now to the tariff deficit, which is probably what one of the most um, salient uh, characteristics of the current um, energy landscape in, in Spain. Uh, what happened initially is that uh, in early 2000s, uh, there was a gap between regulated prices to consumers and system costs, especially generation costs. So uh, liberalization happened uh, in early 2000s. So uh, generation prices were free. Uh, however, retail prices still remained regulated. So due to political reasons, uh, retail prices were not increased, but generation costs increased. Or at least the um, mandatory pool reflected increasing, uh, increasing prices. It's to be said that the uh, generation situation in Spain is quite oligo oligopolistic. So well, uh, legitimacy of um, these prices uh, would be uh, under question. But still, uh, this, is, this, is the, the, this is how the market rules are today. So this is, was one of the reasons of uh, tariff def deficit. But in more recent years, especially after 2007, following the uh, strong promotion of renewables, um, the support schemes to scheme to renewables uh, added to this deficit. So actually, the debt uh, grew, grew up to 30 billion euros, which is um, uh, for this country uh, quite unsustainable uh, debt. So um, it was even in 2013. Uh, the debt was still increasing. So in 2013, the deficit was still 3.5 billion euros. So this can very well explain the drastic measures taken to um, reduce the deficit. Fortunately, today, uh, several measures have been taken. And uh, in 2015, it's expected even a surplus. So uh, deficit has uh, stopped. Not that. Uh, pending debt is still 27 million billion euros. So what were the measures taken? All for renewables, retroactive measures, and cancellation of further support, as we have seen. 
transmission distribution activities are uh, the remuneration is revised, taxes are applied to generators, and um, there is an increase in access to grid tariffs for consumers. We will see later how the component of access to grid in the electricity bill is even higher than the cost of energy. So it's been quite drastic uh, adjustment. As a consequence, uh, as mentioned before, no single megawatt of renewable energy has been installed in 2015. In 2014, no wind and only five megawatts of photovoltaics. And cogeneration installations have been affected as well, and many are being dismantled today. So it's uh, quite a drastic uh, landscape, as you can see. This is an interesting slide. Let me explain. Let's see how the electricity system costs split down in, in Spain. First of all, let's get rid of uh, taxes. So in Spain there is uh, VAT 21% plus special tax on electricity 5%. So just removing this 26%, let's go to the remaining, which is split down in the following terms. Energy term and access to, access to the grid. The energy reflects the costs of energy at market price, so basically the results of the mandatory power pool, and this represents 39% of the bill. Then some capacity generation payments and demand interruptible payments, basically for uh, big industrial companies. So this makes 46% of uh, the bill. Then the rest is TMD with 5 and 15%. And we have a strong 34% for renewables and the deficit entity. So um, we have to pay back this 30 billion euros of um, tariff deficit back. So that makes that uh, for many customers, uh, the access to the grid term is bigger than the consumption part of the, of the bill. And this is, uh, this is uh, well, um, not surprising when we see the overall system costs. The gas uh, perspective, things are quite different. Uh, we have a transmission system operator called Enagas, owning, owning more than 95% of national transport pipelines and facilities. Um, as in the case of electricity, no more than 5% can be owned by um, companies or persons. Distribution, there are more than 70 DSOs, but again, for larger ones, uh, same as uh, same companies as for electricity. The wholesale and retail prices show increasing trends between 2003 and 2014. So roughly 5% at the wholesale and 2% at retail prices. Um, there has been a, an important investment made in the gas sector in the recent years. And since uh, 2008, with the uh, economic crisis, uh, demand has uh, slowed down. So there is uh, also an imbalance between revenues and costs, but of course not as drastic as in the electricity system case. So um, based on the experience from the electricity, a fast reaction uh, from the regulation, so a royal decree in 2012 develops measures to prevent imbalances. So uh, stop of new regasification plants, there are six at the moment in, in Spain. Um, basically no more new transport pipelines and uh, remuneration of storage areas are, is reviewed. It's to be mentioned that uh, 20 days of uh, gas storage equivalent uh, is to be uh, ensured by a natural gas company. And um, as mentioned before, six regasification plants provide uh, good flexibility for the gas system. 
on the nuclear side, um, the government um, still uh, considers that uh, nuclear is necessary in order to have a balanced energy mix. There are seven nuclear reactors, um, at least visibility till 2020, uh, even till 2035, roughly. There are new taxes introduced to nuclear power, either to the generation or to the storage in centralized installations. So let's go now to a, far, a quick review of uh, the supply. So as you can see, the primary energy supply has been uh, rocketed until 2008. At this time, a uh, slowdown of the economy and uh, reduction of uh, energy supply since then. On energy independence, well, one could say that uh, the level is between 25-30% in these uh, recent years. This is the mix. Um, big part of oil, mainly justified by the transport sector. 22% gas, 21% electricity. Looking at the simplified energy balance, I would simply point uh, this to red lines. Efficiency of uh, efficiency, uh, sorry, efficiency of transformation. So it's um, quite striking that in the 60s and 70s the efficiency was roughly 80 percent, while nowadays we are in the 70s, even lower uh, levels. On energy independence, as mentioned before. Uh, between 25 and 30 percent. Electricity. Electricity follows the same pattern as explained before. Quite uh, increasing trend um, up to 250 terawatt hours per year, and then since 2008, decreasing slowly year after year. The mix um, well, changes year by year, so uh, you could find some um, slightly different um, figures uh, compared to the previous slide in the introduction, but roughly um, there is a quite balanced uh, generation mix between uh, natural gas combined cycles. Coal, coal is varying according to the years, but um, basically between 13 and 17, 18 percent. Then hydro, again, it much depends on uh, how wet or dry is the year. 20% for nuclear and 24% for uh, renewables, wind, solar, and geothermal. So um, if we add this 24 plus uh, the hydro, we are at the 40% uh, range mentioned before. On interconnections, um, Spain has been uh, for many years uh, an energy island. So on the electricity connections, uh, it's uh, still very low, uh, less than 5%, which makes uh, Spain a country in the uh, very red area together with Baltic uh, countries. So these are the two, uh, Iberian Peninsula and Baltic countries are the two uh, main focal areas for uh, uh, improving the interconnection capacity up to 10% uh, at 2020 horizon. And then there are targets, of course, to go to go beyond uh, for 2030. But uh, at the moment, only 4.3% uh, interconnection rate uh, exists. Uh, and still, it's split between France and Portugal. So um, uh, considering the fact that only France accounts for a real support from the rest of uh, the interconnected system, um, the interconnection rate is st even lower than this 4%. So the country is uh, still very isolated. A new uh, underground uh, interconnection has been built in February uh, this year, so it's uh, good news. Uh, three others are planned uh, through the Pyrenees and also another through the sea. So basically, uh, the target is to uh, raise the capacity to 8,000 megawatts. 
uh, up from 2,800 uh, today. Uh, Spain exports electricity today, but of course uh, it's far from the potential that it could have. So together with the um, uh, high renewable potential, one can realize uh, how uh, the development of interconnections can be a key aspect for Spain to, uh, to provide with renewables to Europe. Gas. Um, gas production is uh, negligible, of course. Um, there are six LNG terminals, regasification terminals, as uh, indicated before, and this provides with a huge flexibility uh, in the supply side. So uh, main imports come from Algeria, Nigeria and Qatar. Um, there are also international connections with Morocco and Algeria. And uh, Spain works as a bridge, so uh, not all the gas is consumed. Oil, I will not spend much uh, here. Basically, about well, nine refineries. Um, as for gas, uh, oil production is negligible, so most mostly imported. Again, Nigeria, Mexico, Saudi Arabia, etc. So on the demand side. Uh, of course, uh, the pattern follows the uh, same features as uh, the supply, of course. And if we go to the split down, we can see one fourth for industry, a lot for transport, less for services, and 20% for residential. Industry, uh, for industry, the main um, fuel is gas, followed by uh, electricity. However, in the, in the bills, we'll see how electricity weights much more than uh, oil or, uh, or gas. So uh, this shows how electricity is uh, significantly more expensive than, uh, than the gas supply. In transport, of course, majority of oil, uh, still 7% penetration of biofuels and waste, but still far from the 13% target mentioned before. In the services, it's uh, quite... Um, uh, telling uh, the 70% penetration rate of electricity. This can be explained by uh, probably the climate. Um, it's in most of, uh, at least in the in the coastal area, it's not that cold in winter, but it's warm in summer. So uh, a lot of heat pumps and uh, refrigeration systems. So this probably explains um, the predominance of electricity. And in residential, again, it's uh, uh, dominant electricity. Uh, and climate uh, probably explains, once again, uh, the penetration, because uh, usually electric radiators or heat pumps are used as a solution uh, for winter, while providing uh, also a solution for, for the hot summer. Um, anyway, oil and gas represent a, a relevant part, as there are many regions in Spain, and you have seen it's quite, uh, there are many mountains, there are cold regions uh, as well, especially inside the country. But many population concentrates in the coastal area. Agriculture, of course, dominated by uh, oil. So, uh, on the National Energy Bill, um, well, for the industry, dominates the electricity. So as, as we have seen, gas is uh, the, the dominant energy, but uh, for the bill, it's uh, electricity, which uh, triples the gas uh, bill. In transport, of course, oil, and in household and services, as we have seen, electricity is the dominant uh, carrier, so uh, no surprising to find uh, this uh, national energy bill. On prices, uh, we will not extend much. Uh, we will simply say that uh, if we look at the indicator uh, which compares uh, the prices with uh, its neighbors, um, these uh, numbers uh, indicate the number of uh, standard deviations above um, average uh, prices. So it's uh, slightly more expensive than uh, most of the neighbors apart from uh, Italy, which, of course, has uh, much higher prices. Still, 
uh, there is some statistics here as in the case of Spain, the whole equation needs to include the uh, term of access to the grid, which is quite predominant uh, in the case of Spain. For gas, it's uh, rather aligned with the neighbors and slightly, slightly uh, cheaper prices. For CO2 emissions, um, CO2 per capita is uh, clearly below the average of uh, European Union, um, so with uh, 5.8 tons uh, per capita compared to 7, uh, the average uh, of European Union. Uh, well, that has, uh, of course, uh, many explanations like uh, the economic structure, uh, the industry penetration, etc. Uh, network losses in the range of uh, 9%. On the technology, um, it has to be mentioned that uh, Spain has been quite leaders in uh, wind, of course not as much as uh, countries like Denmark, but still um, there are some uh, worldwide uh, manufacturers and important project developers, so manufacturers as Camesa and project developers as uh, Iberdrola. Uh, solar energy. Uh, so many project developers and general contractors. Um, we can say it's been a success uh, in uh, feeding intermittent power in the electricity grid. So here Red Electric and the Control Center for Renewable e Energies is probably one of the leaders in the world in uh, renewable energy integration. Recent effort to related to biofuels and uh, well, additional strategic areas, uh, as you can see here. So um, I will not extend much. Uh, Spain was well ranked, but now uh, position number 14 in the uh, transition to a sustainable energy model, uh, according to the well, this World Energy Council. Uh, climate policy focused on the promotion of renewable electricity generation via feeding tariffs, but uh, not sustainable on the long term. Considerable dependence on fossil fuel inputs. Geothermal is uh, not really um, exploited so far, so only Canary Islands show some potential. Biomass uh, could be, uh, it's been strongly promoted. Um, remains behind its potential as there is uh, strong base for, for, for biomass. And um, on biodiesel, it seems that uh, there are many imports, uh, so this is uh, negatively affecting the Spanish biodiesel in industry. Other issues, um, as mentioned before, the complete withdrawal of the subsidies for renewables, regulated tariffs and the tariff deficit that, that we mentioned before, and on nuclear ongoing commitment to go uh, ahead till the end of uh, life of um, power. So let's go to the conclusions. That's uh, it's taken <laughs> quite a long time. Sorry for this. So electricity system with access uh, installed capacity and lack of interconnections. So this is uh, one key uh, feature of uh, today's electricity system. Well distributed generation mix, so good uh, blend of technologies. Renewables uh, with a very important development until 2012, but then uh, suddenly stopped. So probably a country paid uh, the high cost of uh, the learning curve for PV, and uh, today no further funds available for but taking advantage of uh, more uh, interesting conditions, which is which makes part of the of the learning as well. Cogeneration uh, that is a point of concern. Uh, there is no further support, and even existing cogeneration plants uh, find no profitability any longer. So many are, are being dismantled. Uh, also, as mentioned before, uh, oligopoly situation, so moderate degree of lateralization. Highly dependent on imports of oil and gas, so 30% uh, self-sufficiency so far. And um, European Union Brussels has alerted on uh, the risk not to uh, reach the European objectives um, in terms of renewable energy 
unless policy changes are implemented. So well, it's to be seen in the months to come how uh, the situation will be uh, will be under. And I think uh, with this I will I will finalize my my session. Thank you. I would like to uh, thank uh, a lot uh, Jose Daniel Fasolino who is with us today as he has been the main author of this presentation, so uh, uh, he will be joining us for the discussion. Uh, thank you, Jose.